Hi everyone and welcome to our fourth week of class. Before I get into the week four content, I want to go back and take a look at week three and the Web 2.0 tools presentation. There are some specific expectations for your Web 2.0 tools presentation that are listed in the module and I'd like you to be sure that you go back and take a look at these expectations and make sure that you have all of the pieces included. In your Web 2.0 tool presentation, you might start with an introductory slide that lists everyone's name. But your individual slide has a few things that need to be on it. You must have the title of the tool. You must have a link to the tool. You must describe kind of what the tool does generally, and you must have an image. One thing you must do for each tool that you list is create a product using that tool. It is not good enough to link to something that someone else has created. You must actually test out the tool and create something with it. Finally, you must, list a, you must include a description of how you might use this tool in education and be sure that your name is on the slide. To go in and comment on someone else's slide, you're going to use the presenter notes section, which is accessed by clicking on the little face down in the bottom right hand corner. When you open the speaker notes, you can go in and describe how students would use the tool. Remember, you're doing this on other people's slides in your particular grade, er grade level or subject area. One thing that it's really important that you do is share this presentation. So up at the top, click Share and go down to the Share icon. When it says who has access, it must say either public or people who have the link can view. And I don't care if you make it public on the web or public at University of Laverne, but you do need to have it, one of these top four buttons checked so that everyone in the class will be able to see your presentation when we share them uh, probably next Wednesday. Going back to this week's content, this week we are focusing on internet and copyright. And so we have a few things here for you to go through. First of all, there is a brief history of the internet, which consists of a few videos that talk about both the history of the internet and how searching works on the internet. Then we have a section about Google that talks about the very specific ways you can use Google to conduct searches. So there's a lot of tips in this section that will help you when you're doing your internet scavenger hunt a little bit later. The third section is the actual internet scavenger hunt and you will need to find the five things listed here and for each one of them you will list the URL where you found the answer the search tool you used, like Google Maps, for example, and the steps that it took you to find the answer. In this particular assignment, bullet points are fine. You do not need to respond in complete sentences. Your big assignment this week is your internet search tip screencast. So once again, you will be creating a screencast and in this one, you're going to be teaching viewers how to conduct a certain type of search. I really recommend that you write a script before you start recording this screencast. That will help make sure that your screencast is professional sounding and clear and fluent. So be sure that you take a look at these four bullet points and ensure that all four of those pieces are in your screencast. You will just submit the URL to me of your YouTube video. Note that I do expect you to use YouTube for this assignment. Some of you had some difficulty with setting up your YouTube account, so I've added a tutorial over on the left menu bar that will help you figure out how to do this. The most important thing to remember is that you must sign out of a personal 
YouTube account before you start trying to do this or you will get caught in a continuous loop. The next topic we'll be covering this week deals with copyright, fair use, and creative commons. Please watch the video and read the top two items that are linked here. The bottom three items all say reference. These are not required readings. They are not necessary in order to take the quiz. But if you are interested in learning more about copyright or you need copyright information for another class you're taking, these are some quality resources. This week you have a 20 point quiz on copyright. This quiz is open book or open internet, I guess in this case. However, you only have one attempt for the quiz. So please be sure that you research carefully what the correct answers are because once you click submit, you cannot change your answer. Also this week, I'd like you to learn about Creative Commons. Creative Commons is a legal exception to copyright guidelines. If you use Creative Commons licensed images, you are safe in terms of copyright. Throughout the rest of this course, you are expected to use Creative Commons licensed images and you are expected to cite them appropriately. In your blog and in additional presentations, you will be expected to use images. So please read this section carefully and then use it as reference throughout the rest of the course to go back and make sure that you are properly using copyright friendly images and citing them appropriately. And finally this week you have a discussion post. Your initial discussion post is due on January 24th and responses to your classmates are due on January 26th. Your discussion post should be approximately 300 words and make sure that you answer the two questions in the post. Your responses to your classmates should be at least 150 words. It is not good enough to just say, great point, I agree. Please pick out a specific element from their discussion post and agree, disagree, or extend on their thinking. And that's our week. I hope you have a great week. Bye.